You are Locked On Bears, your daily Chicago Bears podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The Chicago Bears certainly haven't earned the benefit of the doubt after the last few games, but the Pittsburgh Steelers are a beatable team on paper if the Bears can finally get their stuff together. This is Locked On Bears, and I'm your host, Lauren Cox. I'm an analyst for Pro Football Focus, and I'm here to bring you your daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. You can follow me on Twitter, at Cox Sports One. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, at Locked On Bears. You can like Locked On Bears on Facebook. Join the Locked On Bears Facebook group for even more Bears talk. Make sure that you subscribe to the Locked On Bears YouTube channel, to keep up with all of our video podcasts as well. On the show today, we will put together a game plan for how your Chicago Bears can pull off, I guess, the upset here and try and get back in the win column and beat the Pittsburgh Steelers in prime time in front of a national audience and maybe start to earn a little bit of that respect back that they've clearly lost and I think have rightfully lost, earned that loss of respect. So we'll start with looking at ways that the Bears can get after Ben Roethlisberger and make things difficult for the Steelers' offense. And we'll look at where maybe this Steelers' defense could be vulnerable and, and more specifically than where the Bears need to be concerned about how this Steelers' defense poses some very, very real threats to what Justin Fields wants to do on offense. And we wrap up with some of the biggest matchups that will decide this game and just kind of how this thing looks like it could shake out or really what this game will hinge on either way. Let's start with this Bears defense because that's really been the struggle, at least last week. I mean, it's been a struggle the last couple of weeks, but last week was the first week where we really felt like the Bears offense was good enough and the defense was not, or at least where the offense did enough of its job. It did its job better than it had for much of the season, but the defense was unable to really, for, for the first time I mean, for the last couple of weeks, really hold up its end of the bargain. And so it's a little bit of a wild card here, but I feel like, Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers offense presents a more straightforward type of opponent, straightforward type of approach that at this stage of big Ben's career, he is not the super bowl caliber quarterback that we saw earlier on. I mean, he's just not, a, he's not a young guy anymore and he's never been a quarterback that has spent a lot of time taking care of his body right like i'm trying to be respectful about it but like you know he's not he's never been like tip top physical shape necessarily and so it's not as surprising that he hasn't aged as well as say like tom brady for example who has the whole you know tom brady T tb12 method and the shady doctors and weird diet things i mean it's just a, it's just a different approach for ben, ben roethlisberger and he hasn't been terrible this season by by any means but he is slow He's not mobile in, in any way at this point. And, and I think his arm has lost something, right? He's, I mean, he's always been kind of a strong arm quarterback. And so when you lose a little bit of that, you're no longer, you're not a noodle arm at this stage, but it does feel like he needs to step into throws a little bit more and can't just purely rely on the arm talent from awkward body angles or weird foot placing. So if I'm Sean Desai, the bears defensive coordinator, I'm emphasizing getting pressure on Big Ben because when he's been moved off his spot this season, he hasn't been able to get as much velocity on the passes. He hasn't been as accurate and he hasn't been able to escape the pressure all that well when it has come. So that means I'm I'm even going to the blitz a little bit more, you know, make him throw short, make him check down, make him throw the hot reads, make him just throw at or behind the line of scrimmage and then step up and make the tackle. We know sometimes this season, Tackling has been more of an issue than it should be for this Bears defense, but at some point, you know, you got to tackle, right? They I mean, they, and you can hammer it home as much as you can. And these are professional football players. You have to tackle, especially in a matchup like this, because the Steelers' offense has been able to hit some deep shots, some explosive plays, and it opens up so much for them. But for me, most of those. Deep shots, generally speaking, tend to come when Ben Roethlisberger has a little bit more time in the pocket and can sit there, 
step up and into those throws because like the touch is definitely still there. The placement, he knows where to put that ball when he has the full physical capacity to put his whole body into getting there. But you know, if he's being flushed out of the pocket, he's not going to do the, the flick of the wrist 40 yards downfield the way that maybe he could have loaded up and fired off that cannon a little bit easier in his younger days. And so if you can get that pressure and not give him all day in the pocket, the way say Jimmy Garoppolo had last week, you can limit what this Steelers offense wants to do because their wide receivers, you know, Deontay Johnson and, and Chase Claypool, they're talented and they've made some great deep plays downfield this season, but they're not necessarily making a ton of guys miss after the catch in terms of like, you know, throwing them short and underneath and taking a four yard catch and turning it into a 40 yard catch. Like they can, they're capable of it, but it hasn't necessarily been as much of their MO, right? It hasn't been exactly. where this offense tackles after the catch. He has more missed tackles as a receiver than a rusher this season. And that's a concern. But the but the wide receivers are a little bit less so in terms of playmaking after the catch. And so especially in a game like this with Eddie Jackson doubtful in terms of that deep coverage, I want to get after Ben Roethlisberger and not allow those bigger plays to develop but force him to throw it short. And I'm going to do my best to tackle everyone else. In terms of Harris in the running game, you know, the Steelers have the last few weeks have been running the ball better, but I think that coincides more with them getting better on the scoreboard. It's been, they've been able to get earlier leads and then been able to stick with the running game longer than in the games where they were losing and had to kind of keep passing to keep up in the game. So like Harris is running really, really well still. I don't think their offensive line is run blocking particularly amazing. It's been Harris having to create a lot for himself. And so like, I'm not like, I'm not going to ignore the running game, but I'm not concerned about a huge, you know, that, that dominating me all game. I think it really, the difference for the Steelers offense has been creating some more of those explosive plays to counterbalance the running game, much like the bears have wanted to do on offense. They go a little bit heavier personnel, a lot more sort of two tight ends and three tight ends and, and not as many like three wide receiver spread looks. So that sort of helps in terms of them trying to be physical and establish the ground game. Although in terms of pass protection, those tight ends don't really tend to stay in a block all that much. They chip a lot, but they're not used as full on extra pass blockers and so there's an opportunity there to get that pressure on Ben Roethlisberger stay in your base defense a little bit more as a result and have then more potential pass rushers on the field as opposed to going in lighter personnel with more DBs that are less adept at rushing the passer but it does kind of feel like a similar formula for both teams as far as running the ball deep explosive shots and protecting your quarterback a little bit. We'll take a closer look at how the bears might be able to do that for Justin Fields next on locked on bears. Does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live. Another that helps you stream your favorite shows. You're watching sports highlights on your phone, and then you've got your best friends, brothers, neighbors log in for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle. And it's a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your favorite live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can catch all your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes, no more confusion, and, and no need to ever buy another device ever again. And the best part is there's no annual contract. So get rid of all the clutter and end and on that confusion and get your TV together finally with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content does vary by package. The Bears and the Steelers really do have some similar parallels here that shine through as we kind of break down the teams here on both sides of the ball. So I just, I just, I think as we kind of go through it, you'll kind of like, Oh, that sounds, that sounds familiar. Like I think the Steelers secondary definitely has more name recognition than the bears secondary, but I, I don't think of them as playing like particularly great. I wouldn't say they're as vulnerable as the likes of, you know, Duke Shelley in the slot or the different variations the bears have done at their slot spot and even Kendall Wilder on the outside and some of the mistakes we've seen at safety. You know, no, I don't think the Steelers are quite at that level in the secondary, but I do think they're a front seven focused defense 
much like the Bears. And I don't think you know, guys that you've probably heard of, Joe Hayden, Minka Fitzpatrick, even maybe Edmonds, their other safety was a, a fairly significant draft pick for them. Those are guys you, you've probably heard of, mostly perhaps from their times on other teams. But still, right, there's a little bit of that, how, not household names, but name recognition for some of those defensive backs. And they've been okay at best. Like Joe Hayden is not playing like Pro Bowl or caliber. And same with Mika Fitzpatrick, honestly. They've both been a little bit down for them. But it's that front seven that has bailed out their secondary, I think, quite quite a bit this season because TJ Watt is playing at a just an unreal level. I mean, defensive player of the year candidate run defense, shutting things down on the edge and and great contain to funnel things back inside. And then of course, as a pass rusher, dominating offensive lines, getting after the quarterbacks. I mean, we're the bears have faced some really good edge rushers this season. And TJ Watt is playing right up there with many of the best of them. Don't sleep on their other edge rusher, Alex Highsmith playing very well. doesn't have the same sacks, but has been getting some pressure. And, you know, we heard from Christopher Carter from locked on Steelers last week on Thursday, about how the pass rushers for this team have really been kind of coming on. If you haven't heard that podcast, it's a great sort of preview and a, a deep dive from a Steelers guy, a guy who covers Steelers in person at Heinz Field every week to kind of give you that perspective on the team as part of our sort of back and forth conversation. So go back and listen to that if you have not. But then, of course, Cameron Hayward and that defensive line. Watt and Hayward are kind of their like Mac and Hicks, you know, younger and healthier. <laughs> but what the Bears have had in before in Mack and Hicks on the edge and on the defensive line, although they play more on opposite sides. What Watt is more the left side of the defense. Hayward is more the right side. But regardless, those are the two big ones. And they get good pressure on quarterbacks, and they're good enough against the run to help their secondary quite a bit. Plus, I don't want to sleep on Chris Wormley on that defensive line. I mean, it's not going to be a game that's going to be easy for the Bears to run the ball. But I also feel like Khalil Herbert has played – Pretty darn well, and maybe we'll get David Montgomery back for this game. TBD has not been activated as of Sunday night, but of course the Bears would wait until the day of the game to kind of get him ready and going. We know they won't have Damian Williams, so could be pretty thin again if well, if Montgomery is indeed not yet back until after the bye week. But regardless, Herbert has been good enough, but it's going to be a test for this defensive for this Bears offensive line against the Steelers defensive line. I think in terms of the the linebackers in Pittsburgh, you know, a guy like Devin Bush is of course a super athletic, kind of one of those freak athlete linebackers, but I, I don't see him as as physical, right? I mean, he's he's much more a run around blocks as opposed to taking them on and run through them. And so there's there's ways to sort of catch him being over aggressive on one side. And if your offensive lineman can kind of stay home and and anticipate that yes, he's gonna he's gonna run around you, but if you just you know where the play is supposed to go and he can kind of steal him, let him go where he wants to go, but then seal him there because he's not going to be able to fight through as well through your seal. There is some potential opportunities there. Once Herbert can kind of at least get through that line of scrimmage, Bush Bush has been occasionally some a little bit more vulnerable in, in the run defense area. And I think overall the Steelers have been a little bit heavy on the missed tackles, and that's not Bush specifically, but especially the defensive backs, Fitzpatrick, Edmonds, and then Hayden and Sutton. They, they've missed some tackles this season. So if you can get the ball to some of your guys in space, you need your Bears playmakers to win in the open field. That doesn't mean screen game, throw the wide receiver screens over and over again. I like the way the running back screen has been building its path into this Bears offense. But it does mean when you complete the slant over the middle, you should be able to create some extra yards there. Or, you know, you're getting the eight-yard dig or maybe, you know, a, a little, dare I say, the curl route at, at 10 yards, right? There's more of an opportunity in this game to make the first guy miss and create some of those extra yards after the catch. I haven't felt like we've seen enough of that from the Bears playmakers, the wide receivers and the running backs in the passing game. I mean, I don't expect any of these Bears tight ends to be shifty in the open field, but like, I think it's time for them to help Justin Fields just a little bit more after the catch to just make things easier on him so he doesn't have to be the, the superhero type plays that we saw more of even against the 49ers, but I've seen kind of woven in there throughout that as like signs of, Oh yeah, that's the kid that we definitely saw at Ohio state. I do think based on what we've seen from the Steelers this season, this bodes a little bit better for fields in the sense that they have not been a heavy blitzing team for the most part. Now, maybe they switch that up for fields. I mean, Mike Tomlin's a smart coach and he's definitely not like the, the stubborn coach in the sense of like, our defense does this every game and we're not going to alter our game plan based on the opponent. Right. I mean, I think he's, he's been successful and experienced enough to know that like, yes, different quarterbacks and different teams and different matchups require different defensive strategies. So maybe we'll see a heavier pressure front 
because teams have been doing that to him as a rookie quarterback, and it has worked to a large degree. But their MO this season has been more so to trust Watt and Hayward and Highsmith and those guys in the front four to be able to get pressure and not need to blitz. And I, I wonder if that's maybe how they'll take it against the Bears. You say, you know what, we'll start in the first couple of drives, see how our front four can do against this Bears offensive line. And if they're getting pressure on their own, then no need to blitz. And if Fields is having some time to throw early on, then maybe you mix in more blitzers and you try and get more aggressive and you kind of play this like this game of like when you blitz and when you don't and what you show and what you don't and try and get in the rookie quarterback's head. So I, I do overall, I am worried about this Steelers pass rush because there has been enough talent there and they have, have been successful enough without having to be aggressive blitzing so far this season. But I do think then it's the same formula that we've been talking about a lot for Justin Fields, a lot of play action, try and neutralize some of the pass rush there and build off of your running game, make the play action plays look like the running play, so The defense can't tell the difference. Create some more time to throw then. Get the deep shots in to balance your running game. Run the ball, be a run-heavy offense, Be have that be your identity like the Bears have been establishing, but you need explosive passing plays to then go with that to open up the offense, much like the Steelers are going to try and do. Move the pockets, play action, some max protections, keep the tight ends in to help the running backs in sometimes, right? Mix some things up. Help your quarterback have time to throw because that's a little bit more of what he needs at this time. And really the goal then is to just – Make it so that Field doesn't need to scramble on fourth and one for an amazing touchdown. Make it so he doesn't need a, a perfect rolling out to his left throw to his tight end that is just phenomenal plays that you love to see from Justin Fields, but it doesn't need to be that difficult. You don't need him to have to do so much of that work and carry so much of the load. Playmakers need to step up, offensive line needs to step up, and scheme needs to make it easier. And then you just kind of hope that in between when they're not able to step up, that Fields can then be that difference maker. It's not the only person that needs to be a difference maker in this game. I think there's a few different matchups that will ultimately make the difference. We'll go through the spots that should decide this game and what we can expect from the Bears in those matchups next on Locked On Bears. I know I can always expect a delicious, sweet treat every time I crack open a built bar. It's the reason why they're the world's best tasting protein bars, because they don't taste like protein bars. They taste like candy bars. You know, none of that, you know, chalky, waxy, hard to choke down stuff that you get from some of the other companies. No, these are soft, chewy, and covered in 100% real chocolate, but they're low sugar, low calories, high fiber, and high protein. They come in a bunch of delicious flavors, and the company has been like putting out these different sort of like limited time flavors. Throughout the month, and they've done a mystery flavor as well. They've got paranormal pumpkin and strawberry, cherry, lime, so many different great varieties. And every single built bar flavor I've had, which is most of them, have all been phenomenal. It's a great variety. You will find something you love. I guarantee it. Head on over to built.com and enter our promo code LOCKED15, and you're going to get 15% off your next order. That's promo code L O C K E D 1 5. Locked 15 for 15% 15 off at built.com. The betting line for Bears versus Steelers has shifted ever so slightly since last week, getting ready for game time, especially I think when the injury report comes out and confirms Khalil Mack is out. It's now Steelers minus seven, a full touchdown favorites at home. And I'll tell you what, our friends at betonline.ag are the top sports book to lay your money down. It's the number one place we recommend and the number one place we trust. Not only for professional football, but college football, basketball season, hockey season also underway. Plus, I mean, all the sports, soccer, hockey, tennis, boxing. Plus, they even have Vegas games and so much more. So check out betonline.ag. Sign up today for a free account. Enter our promo code Locked On. And you're going to receive a free 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit, giving you even more free money in your account to play with at betonline.ag, where the game starts. This game for me starts in the trenches. Particularly, it's going to be the edge rusher, the top edge rushers on both sides against maybe the weak links on both offensive lines. And, and those two matchups we'll dive into now are the ones that I think will really turn the tide in either direction. With Khalil Mack out, all of the pressure, literally pressure on the quarterback, but metaphorical pressure of like the defensive success 
falls on Robert Quinn, and he's got a phenomenal match. Yeah, but phenomenal is strong against a rookie fourth round pick at left tackle, Dan Moore Jr. Up front for the Steelers offensive line, he hasn't been terrible. If you're sort of, again, picking where you're going to find those plus matchups in the pass rush versus their pass protection to get that all so important pressure on Ben Roethlisberger, it's Dan Moore Jr. And that just happens to be where Roquan Smith lines up. You're still going to need your other pass rushers to do their part so they can't just give all the help to Dan Moore and let everybody else just go one-on-one and win those pass rushes. But we need to get more of that Robert Quinn that we saw earlier this season. And some of that was from playing with Khalil Mack and Khalil Mack playing well and Quinn being able to take advantage of that. But there's some opportunities here for Quinn to do some damage against a potentially weaker opponent. And if he can get that pressure on Ben Roethlisberger's blind side, it is going to go a long way toward this Bears defense, slowing down the Steelers offense and keeping their keeping the Bears own offense in this game and giving Justin Fields a chance to not have to be coming from a massive deficit throughout this matchup. But then the other side of that, it's the Steelers top pass rusher TJ Watt against Larry Borum. The rookie again, again, it's it's veteran quality edge rusher versus rookie offensive tackles in for both teams. That's why these parallels, right? The similarities here are kind of striking. But Larry Borum has played pretty well after coming off of injured reserve for a fifth round rookie. It's been absolutely meeting or I mean, exceeding expectations for where he has been drafted. He's not playing at a Pro Bowl level, but for, it's, he's been he's been fine. He has not faced a TJ Watt caliber offensive lineman. And I have some very real concerns about how that matchup is going to go. This not means that doesn't mean it's going to be a, a referendum on Larry Borum's career, but I, I just I'm anticipating a few of those like welcome to the NFL type moments for Borum when the pass rusher you're about to face is really really good. And and full disclosure, like I went to the University of Wisconsin and I know T.J. Watt. Like we're not friends, like we don't text, but like I interviewed T.J. Watt many times. He's a good guy. I I wish him nothing but success and. You know, but but he's legitimately playing really really well too, and it's it's a real it's going to be a real real challenge for Larry Borum, and I, I'm I, I'm definitely most concerned about that matchup in the Bears' offensive line, flushing Justin Fields out of the pocket, forcing him to be the hero, forcing him to be the playmaker out of, out in space, and he is capable of doing that. He's also capable of fumbling and taking some sacks and holding onto the ball a little bit too long in some of those situations, normal, natural rookie mistakes, but those types of rookie mistakes can be some of the difference between winning and losing in your offense, putting up enough points. I mean, I I think the Steelers are a beatable team on paper. I think the the winning streak that they're on have been against teams that have been playing lower quality football at the time that they have played the Steelers, but the bears are also playing very low quality football at the time that they're playing the Steelers. So and it's not to say that I think the Bears are going to win, but I think if there was a game where they could turn things around, this has some real potential. The 49ers game was also supposed to be that game against the 49ers team that was struggling and where the Bears were, I mean, clearly not able to do so. So that's why I'm not I'm not predicting a Chicago Bears victory here, but there is a, a potential here for some success. And one last matchup, I, I, I want to see Najee Harris and Roquan Smith in space. I mentioned it. Harris is leading all running backs, not just rookies, all running backs in missed tackles after the catch. He's like 15th in missed tackles on the running game, but partially because the Steelers have been throwing Najee Harris the ball a lot. He's had a lot of catches, a lot of targets, a lot of opportunities to make guys miss in space and not as many in the running game because his running blocking in the offensive line hasn't given him as many clean holes to run through. And you can't, you can't make as many missed tackles when you're running into a pile, as opposed to when you're, when you have a few yards to kind of run through or around a guy over there. So regardless, I want to see Roquan Smith step up and be clearly better. You know, he's had, he's had some ups and downs this season. He's still playing well, but he's had some mistakes mixed in there as much as some bears fans don't want to see him or don't want to acknowledge them. He hasn't been an all pro dominant linebacker this entire season. He's made some great plays and he's been, he's great, right? And Roquan Smith is very, very good, but let's see it, right? Let's, let's see you take over and truly win that matchup because Harris has been so important to the Steelers offense and you can prove yourself as a, a great linebacker, winning that and making those tackles and being everywhere you need to be, everywhere the defense needs you to be it, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's all about sort of establishing your dominance in a matchup like this. I do think, though, this Bears defense as a whole, separate from Roquan Smith, separate from Robert Quinn or whatever, has been such a wild card these last few games. They played so poorly against the 49ers and then against the Buccaneers, 
there were so many turnovers where they weren't necessarily in a great position to, to hold the score down. But I just, I, but after the last two weeks, I can't trust this Bears defense to absolutely be great or to be good enough even after last week. So it does feel like it's going to come down to how much Justin Fields can be special. He was special for a couple plays against the 49ers, for, for more than a couple plays against the 49ers. But there were enough rookie mistakes in there that 22 points was very good, but it wasn't enough to be able to overcome his defense playing really poorly too, right? If the Bears had a decent to above average defensive game, Fields would have done enough with his special plays to make up the occasional rookie mistakes to win that game, right? Fields played well enough to win that game had his defense been anything reasonable. And so... I, I don't know if he's going to get a reasonable defense in this game, and he might have to do even more to to not only overcome his own little things here and there that he's still learning as part of the natural flow of being a rookie quarterback, but then may also need to overcome some of his own defense's shortcomings. So that's that's where it becomes a real a real challenge for me in this one. But if the defense turns it around and we get the same sort of fields level of play that we got against the 49ers, that feels potentially winnable. Not predicting that it's going to happen, but just – that there, there is a path here, and that's why we put together a game plan for that path on the podcast today. I uh, hope you'll tune in for our breakdown of the game tomorrow. It's going to be kind of a late night for me after the game, but I will still have a podcast for you ready morning of Tuesday morning. Make sure we're breaking down everything we saw in that game. So make sure then that you subscribe to Locked on Bears, however you're listening to the podcast, because that's going to be the best way to keep up with all of our daily in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. We're free we're available all, on all platforms. I appreciate you making Locked on Bears your first listen each and every day. That's why we're here for you five days a week, and we're glad to be the first podcast in your rotation every single time. If you need another podcast to go to next, Locked on Podcast Network has Peacock and Williamson, the national NFL show with former NFL scout Matt Williamson breaking down the league from a, a very wide perspective. we got Locked on NFL Draft, Locked on NFL. Plus, if you want more Steelers intel, Lockdown Steelers is a great way to sneak one more of those in before the big matchup Monday night tonight as you're listening to this podcast. So appreciate everyone who's been tuning in. Hopefully uh, putting together a little game plan here can give you, I don't know if it gives you full confidence in the Bears, but at least kind of reminds you that, hey, these games are still winnable even when the team is struggling and there's always that potential for things to start to turn around just a little bit more here. So all in all, I think that's a good enough reason for you to bear down.